Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed be the Father of compassion and God of all encouragement, who encourages us in our every affliction. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus' father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, This child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows. So that was why Jane was wondering if we were supposed to do the sequence today. We probably would have, but she got started a little bit late, as usual. Basically got started on time, compared to normal. Uh, So today is the the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows, and I don't know if you guys realize this, but there's actually a a parish in our diocese whose patron is Our Lady of Sorrows. Uh, Does anybody know where that church is in the diocese? It's in Wheatfield, Indiana, way up north. And the parish is called Sorrowful Mother, which I always thought was pretty strange. And I always wondered, I wonder what it would be like to be the marketing person for Sorrowful Mother Parish. Come and experience the joy at Sorrowful Mother, right? Be fully alive at Sorrowful Mother Parish, right? Kind of an interesting patron. Might be kind of difficult to uh, advertise in a good way. But there is something significant about the fact that we have this feast right after the the Feast of the Triumph of the Cross, recognizing, just as we were speaking about yesterday, that we have the Triumph of the Cross, because it's also significant of our own participation in that Triumph. And who did that more so than Mary herself, who was there at the cross the whole time? As I was reflecting on this this morning, I remembered a quote that I came across last fall. I believe it was by Charles Pigui, a French philosopher. And one of the things he said in there was he said that suffering is necessary for us because our heart doesn't know certain things about ourselves until it suffers. There are literally things about our soul that we will never understand until we have suffered. Even Christ himself, God in the Godhead in heaven, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, literally cannot suffer. And the divine nature, there is no such thing as suffering. And so when you think about the things that Christ being all-knowing when he became man, one of the things that he learned for the first time was suffering. It was a completely new experience for him that he only experienced because of the incarnation. And continued to learn and understand it through the crucifixion. And Mary herself who being born without sin, being conceived without sin, and therefore not experiencing within herself the effects of sin and suffering, she herself also had to learn how to suffer. And she did it primarily at the cross. Simeon, when Christ was presented to her, revealed this to her, that one day a sword would pierce her own heart. And that was necessary that the sword would pierce her heart. Because if it had not been for that sword and that suffering that had pierced her own heart, she would never be able to help us heal our own selves and our own hearts. She would never be able to help us learn from the suffering that all of us experience. So in the spirit of Charles Piggy, I think today is a good time to reflect on some of those things in our lives, the times that we really have suffered, and to ask ourselves, really, what have we learned from those? And have they been completely redeemed? And ask for Mary's intercession to do this.